Namaste and in La Ketch, and welcome to this episode of One World in a New World. I'm your host, Zen Benefiel, and as always, I'm going to refer to those two phrases. Namaste comes from the Sanskrit, spoken it's Brahmi, and it means the divine in me recognizes the divine in you. Interesting phrase from an ancient civilization. On the other side of the world, another in ancient civilization, the Mayans, and in La Ketch, to them, means I am another you. So if we can have any kind of indications from our past to bring into the future, those two phrases would be excellent. Think about that when you're greeting another, and even when you're looking at yourself in the mirror. Try it. Don't believe me? Explore it for yourself. Great. So this week's guest is Michael Vukalik, who uh, is the CEO and founder of Outrageous Success, LLC. He's also an author of Let Go of the Shit Show. Actually, there's an asterisk there. And uh, show, <laughs> it's um, Conquer Your Successful Discontent and Live Free and Fulfilled. He's also got another book coming out called The Mind, the Muscle, and the Miracle, A Survival Guide for Men. Now, Michael's got an interesting history educationally. He's got degrees from Embry-Riddle in Engineering and Technology, Georgia State University in Business, and the University of Metaphysics in Metaph Metaphysical Science and Psychology. And he's also a certified DISC trainer. Um, Michael, without further ado, Glad to have you here. Welcome. Well, thank you for the invite, Zen. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, and I'm glad to be here. Awesome. I think we're going to have a, a really good conversation, and, and especially in regard to your own path, because you've bridged worlds in that process. And so how did that begin for you? You know, there's a combination of science and spirituality involved here. So let's start with that inner awareness and how that came about for you? Well, I, I believe that, I, of course, I've had the perfect journey, as we all do. Um, and I began really learning uh, about energy. And this is, this is how my uh, journey began. Uh, I, had a, I had a traumatic childhood. There were a lot of things that, you know, I went through and it led me to question life and why some people are so successful and others tend to have these upheaval, these challenges in their life. Okay. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I started uh, my first big time career and I had many small careers previous uh, was with Delta Airlines, and um, I was an engineer there, and that's where the Embry-Riddle comes from, and that's where I started I, when I learned about metallurgy, when I learned about how we were treating molecules mm -hmm. to change the behavior of metals and, and, and hydraulics and electric, and I mean, sure. I've, I've gone through everything. Yeah, I came out of the aerospace industry myself and metallurgy, you know, there was a, a fascination in all the different kinds of exotic met metals, you know, waspaloy, haspaloy, titanium, all the kinds of things that go into aircraft that, and the different ways that their molecular structure have to be machined in order to make them work. Right. It, uh, it creates a lot of flexibility. Mm -hmm. um, and otherwise, you know, I mean, when you're flying around, I mean, some of the aircraft are, are a million pounds once they have, once they're filled with fuel and passengers and the structure, the, the, those wings are holding a million pounds of weight in the air um, and they need to be flexible. So uh, uh, that's where my journey started. It all started learning about energy. I, and I started to put this together. And as my challenges showed up, I started to get very curious about how life works. And that's what led me to the next phase and the next. And, and you know, I, yes, I learned about business when I got out into my own business and metaphysics really intrigued me. But it started, I think, before I got into the metaphysical, I got into the spiritual. And um I really increased my connection to divine, mm -hmm. um, divine mm -hmm. intelligence, 
and I realize how our focus really has everything to do with where our life ends up. Okay, right, but, right. Uh, absolutely. The that we create. So, now, did you did you find that um, connection early on in life? As you look back, you know, as we often do, we have this uh, reflection that we have of, okay, how did all those things line up in order to put me where I'm at now and, and looking at those different tasty tidbits along the timeline, right? So how did that, uh, when you were younger, were there some initial things that you began to explore uh, or at least the, the questions that came up in a young mind? Absolutely, um, absolutely. And, and you hit the nail on the head there. Um, when I was quite young, I felt, uh, what's the word I would use? <laughs> okay, you know, you're, you're, a ch you're a child and you're interacting with all your friends and you interact with your family. And I always felt different. I always felt like there was something special there for me that I needed to grasp, okay? And different, messages, different opportunities started showing up. Um, and, and I did a lot of reflecting. Mm -hmm. And as I stepped into these different roles, I realized, I mean, the, these beautiful messages would come to me and I would have the answers that I sought very easily. So, uh, and, and as this journey, I mean, I was, I was very much of my ego, actually, when I was younger, and yeah, I thought well, everything right. revolved around money, okay? It was all yeah. about the money because we grew up poor. We grew up very poor, all right? And um, so that was my focus in getting the airline career, okay? Rather than fulfillment, it was, it was about earning a Sustainability. Oh, absolutely. I mean, because I watched the pain that my parents went through, okay? Sure. And the challenges. I mean, here I am, a 12-year-old boy at one point. Uh, my sister and I are sitting at the kitchen table. And um, my parents are not happy. You can tell, okay? And all of a sudden, I can't, I think it was my father. Uh, he said, Mike, how much money do you have in the bank? <laughs> And I, I, you know, oh, I don't know. I think I, I told him whatever it was. I was a paper boy. Okay? okay. It was my very first job ever. I was probably 11, 12, something, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. And, um, well, you know, can we borrow X amount of dollars? They needed to make the house payment. They didn't have the money. So oh. I was trained very young so on, on several things. And these are all beautiful pieces that I've learned to overcome. Sure. And that's heavy stuff for a, a preteen to have to deal with, let alone, you know, teenagers. You know, I had a, um, I taught high school for a while and there was a, this one kid that was just super sharp. And, and I don't know why he was in the special ed program because he worked nights at Walmart and he gave his check to his mother to help support the home. Now here was a kid that was 16 and you know that had taken on this responsibility that I thought was just phenomenal and at that point school wasn't that much or wasn't that interesting to him and maybe that's why he you know tested into the special ed program because he really didn't care he was more concerned about taking care of his mom sure kind of well, like we probably were mm -hmm. and and those types of experiences can lead to unhealthy patterns later in life <clears throat> another item I've learned. Mm -hmm. So, but it, it was all perfect. It's led me to this great spot today. Uh, but there's, there's been a lot of growth, a lot of growth. No doubt. So in the transition then, so you, you built your career on, on being able to have a sustainable life and have the money and, and you went into the aircraft or, or the aerospace industry, which is a fascinating industry in itself. It is. And, and then you had this awareness or awakening or, or realization that mm, this isn't quite it. How, how'd that happen? What was the process? <clears throat> well, I, I 
you know, it, it came from inside and I, I realized it and we all do, we all get to that point in life, I think, where we uh, question is, is there more for me? You know, th mm -hmm. there's, there's something else calling me. What is it? Okay. And it's uh, interesting that these in, internal conversations, we don't necessarily share with others at the time mm -hmm. because we're, I don't know, maybe you feel a little less than insufficient, um, not ready, you know, the imposter syndrome kind of thing. So well, uh, yeah, it could be that absolutely. Um, and, and another thing is for me, the airline was a, I mean, to work for an airline was, was a, a golden opportunity to all the people I worked with. Okay. Most of them, uh, were very content to be there. Sure. And they earned an, a great income. We had travel benefits, insurance benefits. I mean, it, it was a, it was a, a great life if you wanted to be, and here's the word I'm going to use, controlled. <laughs> If, if you wanted to be squeezed into this little box, okay, and, and right. I felt like mm, we need some expansion, we need uh, growth, I, I can tell there's a lot more to life, and I'm ready to explore that, I, I need that freedom, I need that fulfillment, that was big for me, okay. And as you mentioned, for most of the people around you, that box, they, they weren't aware of the box, they were content. And they were satisfied with their lives, as many are, because that's it's fulfilled them and their family's requirements to some extent. And so they don't necessarily look further yet. Uh, yeah, I, I would think at some point, you know, we all come across, you know, the different questions. It's whether are we listening to that inner voice? Are we listening to that higher voice that shows up, you know, and and. Right takes us in a different direction it, it takes a lot of uh, courage absolutely and courage i heard recently is fear that said its prayers because when you get into that place you start listening to the inner voice and then you decide to take action that's a pretty scary place to be in because you're headed into an unknown absolutely it, it and in fact when i left the airlines there were all kinds of you know, it, it led me perfectly again to expand in many ways. I mean, uh, when I, I, oh, I was a smoker, I, um, you know, I, I had my set patterns that I followed. There was a lot of stress in my life. And now life opened up to all kinds of opportunities. So uh, it, it was big. It was huge. And um, it took a little getting used to instead of knowing you're going to this specific spot every day. Now you had every choice open to you. Of course, I had a good idea before I left. So sure. yeah. <laughs> had a little bit of planning. Yes, of course. Yes. And, and that's really one of the key features is when you get ready to take that leap from wherever you are and whatever you've been doing, there's a certain amount of, of actual strategy and planning that needs to take place that's also fueled from both the inner and the outer awareness of the process that you need to engage. You know, it's kind of like you're aware of the, uh, the entrepreneurial vision, you know, go to the end, see what is there, and then figure out how to take the steps backward in order to get there. Mm -hmm. I... Um... Before I left the airlines, there was quite a bit of planning and um, something, I, another, you know, I, I believe life is all about diversification. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, I had started to invest in real estate, uh, had a couple of licenses in the investment industry, stocks, stocks and bonds and things like that. So I opened myself up to a couple of new avenues and all the while I felt this, this beautiful energy growing inside, uh, which was, as I began to use my focus, I used my mind um, to uh, create new neural pathways to divine intelligence to, I mean, I started just opening up to many things. Do you remember any specific thoughts that you had in the process of 
creating that door and, and opening yourself to those new choices to to create those new neural pathways the well the first thing that comes to my mind um what what really pushed me and there's several teachers that talk about this mm -hmm. it's it's same it's the same uh they say it's the same journey that many of us have we we get to a point where there's enough pain where we start to awaken it's like okay enough of this right and it's time to open up it's time to look at where is this all coming from and um yeah we ascend from the bed of nails yes <laughs> absolutely and they in the in the story of i mean we I, i'm not a big bible person i mean i understand um uh, I, I was Catholic for many years. There's a lot of background here, okay? But um, even... I will Jesus, forgive you. The Jesus story. Um, <laughs> I mean, he went through a lot of pain before he opened up, okay? And, right. and it's, it's it, I think that's part of life. If you're looking for growth, and I think the first thing, if, what really hits me, I wanted to expand... And the, the pain had become enough, high enough, to where I said, how do I evolve to this amazing soul where I can have the choice whether I come back to earth or whether I don't? I, I, I asked that question. I mean, I, I was asking a lot of questions, but I, this That's one a very profound remember. one. Yes, it is. It, because how, how can I evolve to that place where I can have the choice? I have the freedom, even when we leave the physical, the freedom to choose, do I come back to the physical or do I not? I'm, I'm, and I've heard a lot. I've learned a lot on both ends. Okay. So mm -hmm. it was a beautiful question. And that's probably the one that really pushed me. Now, does that Pre, uh, was that a precursive question to your entering the uh, metaphysical university or did that come after oh it was before that okay mm -hmm. um so that was a, exactly oh. when i started asking that question <laughs> <laughs> i know sometimes it's just like it was present i don't remember where it's just been there for a while yeah and, and so we follow that path and and for you one of those steps along that path was to get more familiar with the metaphysical side of things. And, and knowing you just briefly as I do, you're very inquisitive. And that would be one of the ways for you to open up yourself to that world and mm -hmm. get a, um, an accelerated learning curve process from it. Yes. And, and I have actually trained with uh, some masters that are, have you heard of Vendanta or Upanishads or, you know, it's more of a, it's not oh, yeah. when I first, right. when I had my awakening as a teenager, uh, I wanted to find references in other places because it was so bizarre and, and there was nothing and, and people just thought I was crazy nuts for having that kind of experience, let alone talk about it. And so I read the Vedas, the Rig Vedas, Upanishad, Bhagavad Gita, uh, mm, right. parts of the Quran and, and all mm -hmm. of those things looking for and of course I, I was a Bible student as well and I was looking for cor correlation and corroborative stories that at least indicated that yeah there were others that had been there too mm -hmm. and that was so soothing even though uh, like in the Vedantic philosophy and, and from my experience I ended up uh, I asked the question uh, you know what's truth and I'm willing to die for it and so I ended up short story in the light and then going beyond it well in the light i felt individuated and yet part of a collective and this was the same reflection that the vedantic philosophy has of unity consciousness right where we are all part of this unity consciousness and yet we are individuated in the physical form perhaps with a perfected form fit and function that we discover along the way by acquiescing to that inner voice and this is... do you do you um then you, you actually believe that we're we are all aspects of ourselves i mean 
well, that yeah, human it, consciousness. I mean, we're all aspects of our everything. That, uh, every person that I meet is another aspect of me. Right. Um, <clears throat> this right. is the opening, you know, in La Quet, so that, that, That's I am another you. So that yes, we are all connected in that way, and yet we each have our own special sauce to add to the soup. Absolutely, and and now I believe that is the ego. That's the ego. That's the the. You can call it conditioned self. You can there's uh, you know the the physical self that and and that comes from my training. Um, that comes from everything we pattern, everything we believe, the people we interact with, and um, so we're. This is I'm, I'm not going to say that the ego is 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 uh, a horrible thing at all. I mean, we wouldn't be in the physical without. Well, I think it's. It's purposeful. Yeah. And, and as oh, you absolutely. know, you know, when you step back from that, nothing is good or bad. It's how we think about it. Right. right? That's right. And, That's right. It's what you think about it. Absolutely. Yeah. And, 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 and none so of it is, none of it is good or bad. I mean, really, when you, it, it's perfect. <laughs> right. Right. And, and depending on, and, and as you know, in studying metaphysics, there's a, a we, we are a multidimensional being. So there's other yes. realms that we are part of that if we look at life from, a higher perspective, we can see the flow and and remove our judgment and projection or prescriptive activity toward it and have a little freer understanding it and, and release the tension from the ego trying to judge itself because it hasn't been in full integrity in the process. And this leads us to the next phase of it, which is the we go. Right, that's where we combine with others and, and learn how to get along with people, places, and things to the extent of being able to accomplish our dreams and visions. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you know, I my mind just flashed back to a, a little story of how I really started incorporating this this higher wisdom. This awesome. This Let's hear it. wisdom, it, and it it leads back to my mom actually. Um, you know, we had, we, my mom and dad had conflict. Okay. And, um, my mom was, a, a, a beautiful, intelligent soul. My dad was too. He was more playful. He had, you know, things heading, leading back to Croatia. And, you know, there was, there was a lot of up, upheaval over here, but my, sure. my mom was very, more quiet and intelligent and um then the two of them i don't know how they got together but anyway um my mom when she passed i'm gonna, to make this a very short story if there's there's more to it but uh her and i were very close as we as i grew up because my dad would get uh, emotional, physical, you know, there were things happening that really shouldn't be happening in the family. Yeah. And my mom didn't know what to do. She would get very quiet, you know, um, so she had her learning journey and so did I. But anyway, we got very close. I, you know, and, and I, uh, I kind of, uh, I patterned my mom. Okay. Mm -hmm. But anyway, and some ways I patterned my dad too. Absolutely. Well, it's interesting. I, it, it, we'll pause that conversation for just a moment. Sure. In uh, James Redfield's book, The Celestine Prophecy, one of the things that he reveals is that, yes, we do follow our parental uh, behavior, life patterns to a certain extent, because that's the models that we have. Right. And, and we do both of them to oh, yeah. certain extents. And, oh, yes. and, and then we find ourselves and move away from that, hopefully. Absolutely. So, and that's all part of the growth. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It is. Um, Please continue. I, I agree with that. Absolutely. Uh, but as my mom uh, got older and she she became ill, the last six years of her life, I was with her quite a bit, and she went through quite a bit of she went through cancer treatments and uh, you know radiation and chemo and all kinds of things. And I I watched what was happening, and she clung to the idea that the doctors were going to heal her. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, anyway. It, it was a very hard uh, part of my life, okay? But anyway, um, she finally passed. And here's the crux of the story. 
three days after she passed away, I, I was in tears quite a bit, but I was close to my mom. Yeah, my, dad, my dad was still alive. Okay. And, um, we didn't have the understanding, my dad and I, like I had that connection with my mom. It was, you know, a deeper connection. But anyway, when she passed away, three days after she passed away, three days, uh, this brilliant, amazing, just overwhelming, multidimensional light just came. It was a beautiful day, just like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Beautiful, amazing day, right in the middle of the day. I was in tears. Okay. Oh, oh, I have to do all these goofy things. You know, you have to make arrangements and do all and make these decisions and decide where you're going to have services. And so I'm, I'm, you know, having grappling with this and having a little bit of a difficulty. I was just upset. And here my, this light shows up and I'm here with a friend and, you know, she doesn't see it as much as I do, but there it's just so, so amazing. And um, I hear straight up, Michael, and, and I knew it was my mom. I knew it was my mom. You could feel the love there. Well, yeah, and the, the voice recognition has the... Well, it's, it, and, you know, there was no real voice at all. It was just, you know, you heard it in your head. Okay, but anyway, so that's a voice. That's a frequency transmission, and you and it was sure. a resonant energy that you were well familiar with. Absolutely, it, it was like the the love of that person multiplied times a hundred. Okay, yeah. it, was, it was amazing. But anyway, um, she said, I, "I'm okay. I'm okay. I, there's no more pain. I'm 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 in a great place." And, and you know, and it came out slower. That was my journey. And the crux, what she said in the end, I mean, I was so taken aback. I've never had that experience before. Um, now I, I've had my journey. Now I want you to have yours. Don't, don't worry about me. I'm, I'm good. You know, so this solidified, that experience right there solidified that, wow, we do carry on after we leave. Right. The so energy all energy always <laughs> remains. Uh, I mean, it's it so and as she has communicated with me, she's become one of my guides. As she has communicated with me over the years, I I found out that you know my my sister's daughter's child was is part of her. I mean, she confirmed that. It's like, what? So there <laughs> is, you know, this whole um reincarnation i mean i i just opened up to so many things okay and it really i just had to tell that story about how that really became truth for me okay well, and this was your own near death experience right because it, in that light and, and i'm speaking from my own personal experience of having been in the light and returned so mm -hmm. this was a way for you to kind of enter that light because it surrounded you that's what, oh, yeah. you know, you, you felt it and you had this, um, acquiescing to a greater truth that was available that set you at ease. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's, I think that's kind of the purpose of it all is just to set us at ease with the confluence of, of our life. It, it was amazing. And yes, it gave me a lot of peace. Uh, answered a lot of questions and set me on. Uh, it solidified my journey going forward. It really did. Hmm. Yeah, phenomenal. And, and you know, for those for our viewers, you know, if you have this kind of experience, it as you've noticed with Michael, it, it's kind of hard to articulate. It the is fullness <laughs> uh, of of what it is. And so, if you've not had the direct experience of it. It, it's kind of hard to relate to it. And yet, here's an example of it happening, mm. right? So there are those things. And if you've got questions about it, just do a little research. This is all, it's, it, as, as you'll uh, validate, I'm sure, Michael, it's a self-initiating journey. You have to have the questions and then be able to explore whatever those answers are as they come.
Absolutely. That that is the key. That's that's the key. When once you ask the questions, once you become curious, uh, once you open up to it, you can use many different words here. Yeah. Once yeah. you open up to it and say, "Yep, I I I want to experience this. I'd like to know more." You know, and your question will be perfect. Once you ask that question, the answers will come. But you yeah. have, to, have to open so, up. So this all opens up an, another differentiation because there's two paths you can go on from that place. You can try to answer the question with what you think you know, or you can shut up and listen. <laughs> and I, <laughs> and I, I've learned that uh, instead of, there's a way for us to ask the question from within that doesn't engage every piece of conditioning and, and programming that we've had, you know, um, or we can just, as you, as you said, shut up and listen <laughs> because the answer comes. It, it does. Right. Come. Well, and, and don't judge yourself when you get to that place. Don't judge yourself because you're trying to answer the question, what you think, you know, because that's the first step. And then you, rec you get to that edge of the pre precipice where the abyss of, un of the unknown <laughs> appears because you don't know the answer. Otherwise, you wouldn't have asked the question. Absolutely. Um, I, I, I can't tell you how taken aback I was that day. So no doubt. No doubt. Um, and it, it just shifted everything. And um, what were some I, of the things you, you mentioned self judgment? Oh, I'm sorry. Go oh, ahead. Yeah, no, go ahead. Uh, you mentioned self judgment. And, and I, boy, I, um, I used to have quite a bit of that, actually, uh, as a child. Um, it, it seemed like, wow, what am I doing something wrong here? You know, uh, and, and that's, a, those are all stories for another day. But what I'm getting at is in order to really incorporate self-love and, and, um, love who you are, love where you are, love what you're experiencing. And in order to really have that love for yourself allow allow who you are to come forward without the judgment i mean this the self-judgment can really um limit us i mean can really stop us from attaining what it is we're really searching for so right and the self-deprecating uh, thoughts often yeah. hold the keys to the transcendence of them too because it i found and, and maybe you have too that those things that we thought were deficits or things we weren't able to learn or do those become keys to finding our strengths absolutely now asking a question asking the right question <laughs> right it is perfect right and it, asking the question about oh why am i having this or how am i what you know, why am I feeling this way? Or, um, you know, just asking a question and let it go and wait for that answer. Those are, those are the answers that will really get us started. So, so let's talk about how the answers show up for you or, or the general process, right? Do you find that those answers have kind of a, again, a multidimensional aspect where they come from serendipitous moments, chance encounters, synchronicities, um, thoughts popping into your head, you know, momentary visions, uh, all these kinds of things. So uh, do you, it, is that part of the process for you as well? Uh, there was a answer D all the above there, right? Okay. <laughs> um, well, I think we all have our way of uh, I've, I've learned or I've met many different people. So, I, and I've learned how they communicate and, and we all have a different way. Now, for me, um, uh, I have come to the point where, uh, my intuition is, is very strong and I just, these beautiful answers will be there. Uh, but as, I can tell when it's my mother. I can tell when it's a guide. I can tell when it's a master. I can tell when it's someone in the physical realm who's 
you know, uh, interacting with me uh, because parts of my head light up. Okay. I can feel that. Right. I don't know okay. what your experience is. Well, this is where I, I was hoping you would go. You mentioned the word feel, mm. right? That's not thinking. Mm -hmm. Right. So it, it takes me to the place, um, similar to the Vedantic philosophy, only it's more of an indigenous um, reference. And that is the three brain system that they hold uh, as a sacred process, the gut, the heart, and the head. Mm -hmm. And that the gut is where the sensory apparatus is and feeling the vibration, which all things are. And even Dr. Laszlo and, and I had a conversation recently and I mentioned the quantum physics you know, the world 99% space and 1% material. He says, no, nah, I would argue that we are 100% energy. Mm. So, and, and we just have this concept of, of how we condense things into form and, and what that relative activity is from it. So in this um, place and, and the gut feeling, the, the intuition, mm. right? comes present and because you're processing it in the mm, most optimal fashion <clears throat> i'll put it that way because there's no right or wrong right you're moving it up through the heart and then it registers in your head because you're not thinking about it to begin with you're not trying to apply prescriptive methodologies in order to figure it out it's a process that happens uh, almost emotively would you is that your experience absolutely what i do today okay started as a hypnotherapist so i've got a lot of different ideas and tools about the mind but anyway sure what, what i realize today is the, the more i quiet the mind the more i quiet my energy the more i'm in the present the more i allow that beautiful energy to flow I'll sit in front of a blank piece of paper, uh, having asked my question or having set an intention for, or sometimes I just listen and don't ask or set any attention at all. Mm -hmm. The beautiful answers come and I stop long enough to write things down. And once this process is complete, maybe 20 minutes or, you know, uh, sometimes longer, but it could even be shorter. I mean, there, there's sure. no real time frame. Okay. I think that's I what, what at, people. I look at the sheet to... of paper and the, the answers cool. are so amazing. It's like, wow. <laughs> right. Right. And, and that is what I believe most people call stream of consciousness. Mm -hmm. Right. Cause that's really what it is that, that it's a stream of consciousness wherein your conscious self or your waking self has taken a, a another seat on the bus and and you've allowed another driver mm -hmm. to take mm -hmm. charge oh it, it's it's an amazing feeling and it, it's created so many uh moments of beauty right um excitement passion inspiration creativity i mean the, the, sure. the, the words you know and, and a, another yeah. phrase or, or another description of that in the metaphysical realms is called automatic writing, mm. Mm -hmm. right? Where you just, you, you get out of the way and you just sit and like you say, you know, sometimes you have answers or questions, sometimes you don't, you're just putting yourself in that place. And, and um, I think that's the, even just being open is okay. What's here for me, mm -hmm. right? What do I need to know? And what's so incredibly beautiful and and it, it just once you start doing this okay uh, i can remember writing my first book the let go of the shit show right. um writing that book you know i was very much in my head when i started it's, it's like okay how am i going to write a book okay so i was telling my story different things that have happened and what i learned from that what i grasped from those pieces of information at, you know, where I am today. And then the last half of the book, I mean, something took over and that's how the last half of the book came out. It just, just as we were describing, 
And so there's two, one, I'm very much in my conditioned self writing about my sto the story of my life and, and where it took me and how I got here. And, and then, whew, I mean, the, the second part of the book is, is, is written through that intuition, through that consciousness, through that connection. So yeah, it's a, it's very much a catharsis, right? Being a writer myself and, and, you know, I've written nearly 18 books, some say 20. Oh, I, nice. I, you nice. know, um, Good for you. it's, I, I love writing. I love expressing mm -hmm. and, and doing mm -hmm. it in different fashions and looking at things from different perspectives and really exploring that. Um, from on all kinds of different levels. What I found though is that in telling my story <clears throat> over and over, <laughs> there's this catharsis that takes place and and the catharsis comes in layers too hmm. as you begin to explore and, and ask the questions of you know, okay, why did this happen? And then sometimes it's just a natural uh, progression of the stream of consciousness, right? You've got the playing field set out. It's got all the grids. It's got all the markers. It's got all the players from your life on it. And now there's, you kind of give your authority up to the shot caller up in the booth, right? <clears throat> and then that takes place and, and the next phase of that rolls out. And, and it's just amazing when it happens. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I can't wait to see what happens tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that, you know, and it's funny you mentioned that. It's this, there's this um, anticipation and trust with the love and uh, faith and love that we develop from at least exploring and being able to, to get somewhat comfortable in living in that unknown place and yet it feels like home right so there's this dichotomy that seems to kind of vacillate back and forth which may be the you know the pulse of the universe or a heartbeat or or the the pulse between our our dna of the you know the light on light off which is i, I found this is and this is going to sound kind of weird uh looking at the yin yang symbol mm. one, one of my meanderings in, in the thoughtmosphere was looking at that in a, from a three-dimensional perspective rather than a two-dimensional. What might it be if there's an indicator of how that might reflect in our world and, and even in science, perhaps, you know, kind of like the triple six, the carbon atom. The So could this be a cross-section of DNA uh, with the light on on one side and the light on or off on the other because in quantum physics it's all relational to spin right mm -hmm. and so how do we create that spin one direction condensates the other expands so if we're cosmic consciousness condensed into form are we constantly bouncing back and forth between the formless and the form Well, I'm, I'm not. Interesting I'm, question, huh? Yes, it is. <laughs> um, from my understanding, the only, the only part of us that keeps us in form is, uh, it's not so much even the thought, it's, it's the belief, it's the, the well, energy is. behind the thought that, that keeps us in the physical otherwise we're not i mean it's a it's a constant um uh, uh, spinning flowing of molecules i mean mm -hmm. that's all it is i mean so the entire physical life is just an illusion created by what we absolutely um, think is true. Right, right. I mean, so now, that, me that's my this. understanding of it. Okay. Well, so again, let's flip, let's go back into that perspective uh, of being in the presence of light, like with your mom, right? Yes. And so 
part of what I garnered from my experience uh, of being in the light and going beyond, I, I, there was a moment where I was surrounded by points of light and then told that I was to work with these. Well, these were, you know, kind of akin to the cosmic consciousness, what I think the Hindus call nirvana, where when you reach that state, you're in a plane that's, that has a bunch of points of light on it. So these points of light would then, as I understand it, be points of consciousness. So those points then are what's resident in our physical body that connect us to, again, back to the Vedantic philosophy, right? How does, how does that work, right? What shows up? Well, there's a, a point of awareness that has spin. And this is also reflected in some memoirs from a gentleman that ran Canada's UFO investigation program in the 50s. He had conversations with beings that were far more advanced than we are. Right, so they have a little better understanding of consciousness and creation and, and how it all works. And this was one of the things that they had said to him. It starts with a point of awareness mm -hmm. and we create okay. our reality from that place. Mm -hmm. And so what kind of reality would we like to create, right? That's the choice that we're given. And then this, these self-deprecating, these prescriptive methodologies, the programming, the, and especially recently on a global scale, it's like, okay, you guys all need to be afraid of each other, mask up, um, obsess on self-hygiene and sequestrate if, you're, if there's any questions about that, right? And then we all said, hey, wait a minute, this doesn't feel right. Mm -hmm. Now, what have you noticed in that process? Did that obsession on self-hygiene and sequestration get you back into that place of assessing what's going on inside too? Well, I, I've noticed uh, um, looking at the world, it's, it's all fear-based, of course. Um, and... Well, perhaps I, not I, all of it, but the, the far majority, right? It, it's it, obvious. it seems like it is, right? Yeah. Um, There's pushing and pulling of energy rather than flow. Right. Um, and there's there's been all types of restrictions, at, you know, where I live at, as far as what people believe to be true. Now, I I believe to be true that you know, this particular virus, I mean, there's so many viruses, so many uh, different expressions of energy in the world. We're made up of viruses. We're made up of, of bacteria. We're, you know, that's, that's part of our makeup. Yeah, we're, so, we're made up of life forms within life forms. Right. So... I've, I've never had the fear of it, but I've seen and, and witnessed and, and experienced many people who did. Okay, so sure. um, I would put my mask on so I could go in and get groceries, but, you know, and, and go to the places I needed to go. Sure. And there was a time, actually, where I thought, ah, you know, I'm never going to catch that. And, you know, and just by stating that I, I brought it into my life and, and I did catch the virus and, you know, I, I got through it. Okay. It was like a flu with a little more heavy cough. Okay. Yes. I had the fever. Yes. I had it all. Okay. Right. So as I welcomed it and it, and experienced it, <laughs> um, you know, it just solidified that, uh, I really believe that how we think, how we perceive, what what we really um, experience in our life has a lot to do with everything that the, our, our, our being, our right. how we think, how we believe, what our energy is. I mean, uh, that's that's really all there is to it. I mean, it, we say that it boils down to where we put our the focus of our attention, intention, and interaction. Right. right. And whether it's like you just mentioned, you considered the thought of the virus. All right. Yeah. So that's that's the core of your attention, intention or attention, intention and interaction. If you hadn't considered that and now it didn't matter where the mind, you know, whether it was I don't want it or yes, I do want it. 
mind doesn't pay attention to that. The, the do or do not is a, is a Yoda thing, right? Mm -hmm. It just mm -hmm. is. Right. <laughs> and, and unconsciously, we don't hear the knots anyway, you know, there's, right. yeah. Right. It's the subject. Mm -hmm. And so the subject is Correct. present. Correct. In however Absolutely. form it is. So that's kind of an indicator of the value of not thinking and about the things you don't want and focusing on what you do want in a more explicit fashion per se as you develop the vision and mission of your own life in, mm -hmm. in whatever way that takes shape and, and the choices that you have in order to do so right and the little things that and this is funny in, in the entrepreneurial realm and i'm sure you're aware of this the, the same amount of energy take it takes the same amount of energy to do something small as it does to do something big absolutely so what are you going to do right um, <laughs> so it, it in this how, how do you see these kinds of things being able to uh accelerate and, and give your clients that outrageous success that you're all about right how does this what are the kinds of things that do you, that you find that are the most um impactful in the simplest of ways most impactful in the simplest of ways this this right because complexity I, doesn't have to be complicated mm -hmm. well and and that is a profound statement because it it's not complicated but the mind tends to overcomplicate everything mm -hmm. it, well, we overthink it, all kinds of stuff now that doesn't necessarily make it bad it, it, it no but it, it's actually it, advantageous to overthink something because you explore all the different perspectives of it to in greater detail it could be hopefully <laughs> yes it could be uh, a lot of the clients i work with are professionals just as i was who have a lot of ideas and spend a lot of time in their head okay which can be good as you said in, in one way or another and i mean as far as exploring options and and deciding uh, on a specific issue but it, i believe as i've gone through my journey that it becomes more important to actually tune into yourself tune into that higher consciousness turn tune into your heart and slow the thinking down so that so that you can actually start moving in the direction you really want to go because you can i spend a lot of time overthinking many things okay so and this is where my focus is today this is what i help people with uh more than than any other process is how to understand your own mind and uh begin to move in the direction you've always wanted to go okay and it could be several directions but getting i find the more intelligent we are the more we time we spend thinking and if you've had a we're capable of doing so right right um, if, if now, you have a traumatic background though this can really hang you up a little bit it hung me up when i was younger okay sure, sure. and and oh. that may also just be a an important part of the process that we go through it, it absolutely uh, was now the, the time this, comes for a teacher and you once you ask for that teacher then you're on the path again you're you're, right. you're on the path to expand okay so absolutely now in that internal process of managing the mind right and, and being becoming aware of the thoughts you have and, and looking at them in a little different fashion Mm -hmm. isn't uh, the meditation process that one of the um, salient points of the practice is to just be able to watch your thoughts first of all because as you know the pushing and pulling if you resist something it's going to persist mm -hmm. um, if you pull it it's going to try and get away right, right. so right. in that process of just being able to watch your thoughts it appears that this is the natural slowing of the activity as you 
gradually realize that you're observing your thoughts, not having them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, and there's an observer self that that comes into play there because yes. the participant's the one that's having the thoughts. Right. right. Well, yes, absolutely. Um, now, how does that work? How do you explain that to your clients? Well, it's a process, and it, I I don't really explain that to the clients most people who come to to work with me are thinking of themselves as oh you know if i had to put it a label on it i would say they would think of themselves as a victim of of something they're experiencing okay okay they they tend to see themselves this way why is this happening? Why is that happening? You know, how does, you know, they, it's hard. There's the consciousness is expanding these yeah. days. Okay. Wake up and look in the mirror, folks. Right. Yeah. Um, but there is a lot of that. And you can't point that out to them right away. They sure. don't want to hear that. Okay. You, you, you have to let them come to their own conclusion. Oh, that's me. That's right. what i'm doing this is how i think um this is what i'm bringing into my life oh you know so it's a roundabout process to realize um, just how powerful a creator they are yes absolutely and some of them uh, are you know they they can't forgive they've had some experiences where forgiveness is tough i'll never forgive you know I, it's sure. it, some people are really stuck there and I, I i understand it and the best thing we can do is just be compassionate and keep guiding them uh, but i like to get to the point uh, and allow the universe to wake them up the easiest the quickest the fastest way okay that kind of writing a difference kind of writing a different script for the trauma drama mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right yes uh and well you know i i know that well all right so <laughs> yes i think we all do and that's what yeah. we yeah. that's what we ascend from because it it's the the aspect and my dad used to tell me be careful when you're pointing a finger at something or someone because you got three coming right back at you and you better have mm -hmm. at least three solutions or three better questions to resolve why you're pointing that finger and then i i do believe this the the spiritual piece the quantum physics piece i mean it depends on the client whether they're a little more science oriented or or more spiritually oriented sure i believe that adds a lot of peace and a lot of perspective uh to really shift people quickly and the background you've got gives that opportunity you know i, I was asked the question one time about um, my advice for uh, wannabe life coaches mm -hmm. and my first response was have a life first <laughs> right? because you really can't offer expertise and wisdom without having the experience of garnering it otherwise it's all theory theory yeah it's all theory and it, it's elusive because you don't have that visceral experience of it that is the anchor uh, absolutely i i agree i mean uh i've i've got a you know an entire lifetime of experience and so so is as you do and um that adds to it the the education on how to work with it all in the different perspectives and and ideas and concepts and i mean the the, the consciousness awareness is is all they're beautiful tools to help people they really are i mean um, you can bring more peace into someone's life um, through expanding your own consciousness than mm -hmm. than uh, and many people I find are are a little bit afraid when you say spirituality or <laughs> but I don't know why but it's it's getting better okay it is it, it, it vastly better now you mentioned yeah. peace yeah. earlier and, and our maybe our path to toward peace right because ultimately being here now 
leads us to learning how to work together better with others in order to have peace and harmony with ourselves. That's kind of our next level. And especially coming out of the pandemic, it set us up to do so, Mm -hmm. right? To really re-examine how we're living together in order to make life better for all of us, not just a few. So in this uh, strife or, or striving for peace, if you will, in our path to peace, I guess would probably be a better uh, phraseology of it. There's, uh, and as you know, I've just recently taken the executive director position for a global peace movement called Live and Let Live. And mm-hmm. it has two different principles within yeah. that phrase. The live is the legal side where we calibrate the law to promote peace. And then the other side of it is the moral principle, which is simply to be a better human or be a good human is what uh, we say. I, I think that in being a good human, you actually acquiesce to being a better human because you're focusing on that now. Mm-hmm. So how do you see that coming about with the understanding that you have, the work you're doing, the reflection you see in the world and how it's progressing? Uh, are we making progress? Oh, And how well, do you see that progress being made? I think that we are making progress and, and I have to, uh, I have to acquiesce here. I, I have an appointment at 1130, so I'm cutting it really close. Um, okay. so I, yeah, I, I'll have to run. Um, so are we actually achieving or working toward or get moving toward that piece? It was, this was the question, correct? Yes. Um, I, I believe that we've we've reached that tipping point where there are enough of us that are seeking that peace seeking uh the answers and and seeking that joy and that beautiful experience of life and and higher knowledge where there's there's no other opinion other than we are headed that direction we're we've got enough energy around that now so we're we're headed that way um i yes there's still quite a few people who are hanging on to the old and and we see that that's why the conflict is there though i believe that's going to work its way out i mean i I really do so so in in closing then i realize i'm what kind of personal advice could you give to those who are on the fence or maybe or maybe even moving in in the direction of peace uh, what might they do on a daily basis to help promote that in their own lives well first thing that that really uh, helped me in my journey is asking those questions okay but asking the right questions instead of ruminating in something that we've been dealing with for a long time, who is it that I can reach out to or who is my best teacher right now in this moment, okay? Who mm-hmm. can help me or support me where I am right now, okay? That's, I, be, I believe those are the questions that start moving you in the right direction. I mean, the, the, the correct people, the correct experiences and opportunities will show up once we start asking and it's okay to ask for help it really is we don't have to try and do this ourselves some of my i mean i've I've worked with some fantastic philosophers and and you know teachers and it was all part of this journey so it's all it's it's all uh, a part of growing and and raising your consciousness and and asking for the right people And, and instead of ruminating in our old stuff and trying to work through it and you know trying to find the answers ourselves, if we're not at that place the right ask for the right teacher that's really it cool. I, that's what yeah. i believe get off get off the squirrel cage and go hunt for some nuts there you go <laughs> <laughs> take it take a chance get out of your get out of that comfort zone you know and, and right. try something new absolutely right. i mean that that opens up your whole life. I mean, so amazing. Great. I thank Michael, you. Michael, thank much. you. Thank you so much for your time, your wisdom, your insight, and your understanding of the process and, and your sharing of that with our viewers. Well, thank you so much, Zen. I appreciate you inviting me. Uh, this has been a great experience. And hopefully we'll get to talk again soon. 
I'm sure we will, and I'll have your information in the description below the video so that others can follow up as well. Absolutely. Reach out anytime. I'd love, I'd love to um, talk with any of your viewers. Absolutely. Happy to, happy to support, happy to help. Super. Thank you. Yep. All right. Thank you. Namaste and in la catch. And thank you for watching this episode of One World in a New World. I'm your host, Zen Benefiel, and I'll see you next time.